Hi everyone. In this video, I want to talk about LLM settings. So the idea of this section in our prompting guide is to tell you a little bit about how to use these LLM settings. So when you're exploring and experimenting and prompting these models, there are a couple of settings that you can tune to get the desirable results that you want. Now, if you are coming from the world of ChatGPT, right? If you use ChatGPT, the conversational chatbot from OpenAI, you may not know that these models are actually using some specific fixed settings. Uh, you don't see them. You cannot really tweak those. You cannot configure them. But if you come from the world of APIs, you do have access to certain settings that you can configure and you can adjust to get the results that you want. So this is very popular among developers. So this only applies to you if you're using some type of LLM APIs, right? This could be any provider, it could be OpenAI or any of these other LLM providers. So what I want to do in this video is to go through a few of these settings and explain to you with some examples how you can leverage these settings. There are a couple of settings that do stand out here when using large language models via APIs. If you go to the playground, you pretty much have an idea on what are these important settings. So you have them right here. For instance, in the OpenAI playground, you have what's called temperature, uh, maximum length, stop sequences, stop B, frequency penalty, presence penalty. And what we have done in our guide is basically provide you some explanations as to what these are. Now, in this video, what I want to do is I want to kind of quickly go over these ideas and try to explain to you how you can leverage them when you're developing with these models. I must say that we often don't really talk about temperature or top B or you know, most of these settings, but they're actually quite important and useful, uh, but it really depends on what you're aiming to achieve. So let's go through some of these. So I'll start with temperature. Now temperature basically helps you to, it's, it's a value, right? And, and you can see here in the playground, it's a value that ranges from zero all the way to two. Um, the default is one, right? So this is the default that OpenAI Playground has set for you, right? And sometimes when we are doing the examples in the playground, we don't even look at this, but that's there for you. And you can see the definition here, right? It actually controls randomness. So what does it mean by that? Basically, the way I understand temperature is you can increase it or decrease it, right? And this decreases or increases the confidence a model has in its most likely response. So if you look at our uh, definition for it here, right, you can see that you're essentially increasing the weights of the other possible tokens if you are increasing the temperature value. And why is this useful? So it's useful because it really depends on the task, right? So let's say we were dealing with some kind of fact-based question answering, you know, task or application, right? We want to encourage the model to be more factual and less random in its responses, right? Or less diverse in what it is outputting, right? At the end of the day, it's outputting these sequence of tokens, right? And we want those tokens to be what the model is confident in generating. And so if we want that, what we do is we basically decrease the temperature, right? The closer it is to zero, right? The less random those outputs are going to be. So you can imagine that, yes, for fact-based question answering, it's pretty useful to have those low temperature values or use those temperature values that are kind of, kind of lower, closer to zero. Now, if you're doing something like email generation or some kind of point generation or you're generating lyrics or something like that that's more creative on the creative side, it is beneficial to increase the temperature value and experiment with increasing those. However, do note that as you increase the temperature value, something that we have seen in our experiments, right? By that, I mean that you can increase it all the way to two. Something that we have seen is that they become so random to the point where the model is basically producing like gibberish, right? Producing something that doesn't make any sense, nonsensical sequence of tokens. So be very careful when you're setting these temperature values really high. When you're doing it low, you know, this is less of a problem, right? Because it's less random, but when you're doing it, you know, above one and 1 1.5 or something like that, um, be very careful 
about that, and you have to do a lot of experimentation to to see what the model is outputting for your application. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, I think temperature is one of the more important LLM settings. There are other configurations as well, like top P. And I see this with all the language model providers, right? So it's really good to be familiar with these concepts. And top P basically is, you could consider it like a sampling technique. It's almost like a, an alternative in a way. And the reason I say that is because um, it is a very similar concept to temperature. Um, and actually, if you look at the documentation of OpenAI, you can see that they are telling you that it's basically, you know, they recommend to use top P. But, uh, if you're using top P, don't use temperature. And if you're using temperature, don't use top P, right? So do not use both at the same time. Just try to set one and that should be fine. And that tells you that it's basically an alternative sampling technique here um, with temperature. So uh, the, the idea of top P, the way I understood top P is that if you have a high top P uh, value, this basically enables the model to look at more possible words, right? Including the ones that are less likely, uh, which leads to more diverse output. So it has very similar effect to temperature. Although you may get obviously different results when you use temperature compared to when you use top P. So if you're if you're experimenting with temperature and not getting those desired results, then maybe you can you know just leave temperature default value and then kind of go to top P and experiment with top P. That's how I generally use it. I never use both at the same time. In fact, these days um, I focus a lot on prompt engineering, like optimizing the prompt as opposed to messing around with the temperature or these uh, top P values. So that's just something to note here. Uh, you can read the full definition here. Um, there's a lot of good content that goes into like the technical details of these configurations, but I think it's what I've explained is is good enough. Uh, just like the intuition of it, and when you may want to use it and when not. So you can see here the general recommendation is to alter temperature or top people not both. And I think this does apply to most of the LLM providers. So if you're using something like Fireworks, if you're using like Cohere or Cloud, uh, Gemini, whatever that may be. Um, I think you you might consider this recommendation when you're doing that. Um, no, I've heard, I've read in some forums that actually some developers combine both of them and they're getting good quality responses from these models. But that's something that's an exception. I rarely see this to be the case and we rarely use it this way. Now, there are other settings like max land, stop sequences, frequency penalty, pen, uh, presence penalty, and so on. Um, I'll just go briefly through each one of these. These we use less. It really depends really on the circumstances or our use cases. So let's say we are trying to prevent some irrelevant responses, which is, I would say, less of a problem now with these models. However, there is the problem of cost, right? Models are getting cheaper too, so you can make an argument that this is less important. However, when we started with these language models, right, we they started really expensive, and it was really nice to be able to control like how much tokens, uh, you know, how much tokens the model can generate, uh, so that you can control cost, right? So the model can go on and on and on generating text, and and so on. It doesn't finish, and then next thing you know, you have a really high bill. So try to you know use this, and and it really depends again on the use case and your needs. Now, stop sequence is another interesting one. Basically, you define a string, right? That stops the model from generating tokens, right? So <clears throat> you can you can have, for instance, in the OpenAI Playground, there is a stop sequence here, right? And they even explain to you what it is. Right? So here you, you can provide whatever sequence you, you are using or whatever sequence you are expecting the model to output as the final token, right? Um, again, we rarely use this one. It, 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 I think it's very niche and, and it, it really applies only to some type of, of tasks. And we have used it, for instance, for like when we are generating code, that it's really interesting to use it in that setting uh, because we want the model to like, don't explain the code, just kind of open the code and we know what the stop sequences are gonna be and so on. Now we have this frequency penalty, presence penalty. Now, if you are familiar with language models, um, if you go back a few years, you would know that these language models used to generate a lot of like repeated text, right? And that was a very common issue with these models. Today, it's less of a problem, I would say. And now, if you are still having that problem, if you're still facing that problem with some of these language models, it, it could be the case that you're seeing this 
um, that the model is repeating certain tokens or using certain words in its response a lot. If you want to control for that, what you can do is you can use the frequency penalty and it's available right on the playground, right? So the more you increase this, the more it penalizes the, the model and it avoids the model from outputting or repeating, you know, certain words, right? Um, so that's the idea of the frequency. The, the presence is very similar. So basically this one prevents the model from repeating phrases, often it's in its response, right? So it, it you know, it, unlike the other one, which is a frequency penalty, uh, the penalty is the same for all repeated tokens, which means, you know, it's gonna avoid, this is a good way to avoid um, the model from repeating certain sequences or certain phrases too often. So yes, that will be it for the explanation here. Hopefully it was a bit more clear and the intuition is there for you because it's important to be aware of these when you are developing with language models. Uh, today, in my experience, we use them less so, like we use temperature still, right? Sometimes we experiment with the top P, uh, max length sometimes because of cost, to control costs. Um, but you know, and, and this one is more specific to some use cases like code generation. And this one, we use it less because it's these models have less issues like generating repeated tokens or repeated words. So hopefully that was useful. If you have any questions, please leave a comment on the YouTube page and I'll be looking at those and I'll try to provide you more guidance if, that, if there's a need or try to send you to some kind of link for you to get a more technical explanation. If you're interested in that, just let me know and I'll see you in the next one.